There really are a thousand reasons to do a paddling trip to the Thousand Islands. It's a world-class kayak touring destination that's accessible to paddlers of any skill level. For this paddling guide, we've hooked up with Scott Ewart, the owner of the Thousand Islands Kayaking Company, which is the premier outfitter for paddling trips in the area. But before we dive into it, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already and hit that notification bell. Uh, check out the Paddle Tail series, really cool series that goes on amazing paddling adventures to the top paddling destinations in the world. There's a link in the description box down below. And otherwise, enjoy the paddling guide to the Thousand Islands. So in the Thousand Islands, there's actually a lot more than just a thousand. We have 1,864 between Kingston and Brockville. There, most of them are on the Canadian side. A lot of the larger islands are on the American side, but the denser clusters are right here in Gananoque. And Gananoque really is the heart of the Thousand Islands. We have about 85 islands immediately off the shore, nine national park islands within a half hour paddle of where our dock is right here. One of the things that makes paddling in the Thousand Islands so unique is just the endless amount of route opportunities. If you come down in one day, the weather changes the next day, you have a lot of shelter. The wind direction, when it does move around, it really breaks up the wave sets coming off of Lake Ontario. So you are going to find calm waters, which makes it very beginner friendly for families. And if you're just getting into the sport of kayaking, this is a great place you know, to be able to find those calm sheltered waters you really don't get that big exposure like you would out on the ocean or some of the bigger Great Lakes like Georgian Bay, Lake Superior. Lots of wildlife, hunting, fishing is excellent out there and if you're a birder, you definitely gotta bring your camera and a pair of binoculars because the bald eagle, osprey, blue heron, arctic tarns, caspian tarns, loons, ducks, geese, it's just amazing. You can uh, get beautiful shots early in the morning, later in the evening when they like to come up and feed, it's just a beautiful place to go kind of relax with the wildlife. There's lots of different paddle crafts that you can use in the Thousand Islands. We do get canoers who come out a fair bit. The sea kayaks, however, are a lot faster. They can handle the wind and the current a lot better than the canoes can. Canoes are really still designed for the backcountry and portaging where the kayakers can easily handle that open water, especially with the wind and the waves when they pick up. The kayak's gonna take a lot better care of you than the canoe just because it doesn't catch as much wind. Stand-up paddle boarding is getting a lot more popular these days. Really important to still wear your life jacket or PFD on the stand-up paddle boards because of the boating traffic. It's not remote backcountry wilderness, right? There is still power boat access to most of the islands. And even though there's no electricity or running water on the National Park Islands, it does feel like a bit more remote setting so you can relax and not see people uh, around you. Paddling the Thousand Islands is beginner friendly, especially if you go on one of the guided tours that we offer. There's basic instruction on land and then we do on water instruction as soon as we clear the dock and the marina that we run out of. And crossing the power boating channels, we just treat them like crossing highways. It's important to stop your group, stay together, move across the channel all together. And then when you get into the heart of the islands on the other side, you can just split up and wander wherever you want. You can relax, you know, take your pictures and just enjoy, you know, a serene, serene paddling experience. So camping out in the Thousand Islands is still pretty accessible. The kayaks can definitely hold enough equipment to go for a multi-day trip. You just have to play a little bit of Tetris with your gear fitted in the boat so that it still has a low center of gravity. Your smaller things are gonna fit, you know, the bow and the stern pretty well. Uh, and you need to make sure to bring some extra drinking water with you though, or a way to treat the water uh, because there is no running water out on the National Park Islands. If you'd prefer to have your stuff loaded on the power boat, we do offer that service as well. So you can just go with an unloaded kayak, load everything onto our pontoon, we're going to drop it off on the campsite for you so that you just have a hassle-free experience and you can bring the kids' kitchen sink. So if you wanted to go camping overnight, the best resource is Thousand Islands National Park. You can book online with them. You simply log on to the website, figure out which island you want to camp on, make the reservation through their online porthole, and then you can contact us to reserve the water taxi or your kayaks or a guided tour. 
So paddling out here in the Thousand Islands, with the endless route opportunities, it's really hard to pick a favorite place to go. The number of beaches that are out there and the amount of history is just so impressive. Our routes go right over top of a couple shipwrecks. We've got Half Moon Bay as an outdoor cathedral. And the beaches are just impressive, you know. We can swim right off of the granite, um, or there's a bunch of sand beaches out there that you can pull up onto. It's really important, though, that you're sticking with the National Park Islands because most of the islands are privately owned, so you have to treat those as somebody's backyard. So when paddling out in the Thousand Islands, there are a couple things to be aware of, just risks that are inherent to being out here on the river. The main one is going to be the power boating traffic, so we have to treat those channels like you're crossing a highway or a busy street. They're identified with the green and red channel markers, and those buoys do have a number written right on the marker itself, which are identified on our maps. So if you do get lost, you can just read one of those numbers, find a fix on your location, reorient, and continue underway. The other thing to be mindful of is the water temperature. If it's early season or getting late into October, it's really important to have a dry bag of extra clothes with you in case you go for an accidental swim. On the islands themselves, there's not very many hazards other than some wildlife. Ticks are important to be aware of. They are carriers of Lyme disease. Zebra mussels are very, very sharp shells that live on the rocks. So it's important to keep your footwear on when you're in the kayak because if you need to step out into shallow water, they can cut the bottom of your foot. Poison ivy is out there on the islands as well, same as it is in the forests around most of southern and northern Ontario. Uh, so just stay on the trails is the best bet so that you're not trampling any sensitive habitat that the National Park is trying to protect and preserve. So every once in a while, there may be a little bit of bad weather that rolls in. Because the way that the St. Lawrence River funnels storm systems, they do kind of come through here a little bit more powerful and quickly than they do on the mainland. There are picnic shelters out on the National Park Islands, so keep an eye on the map and your weather. Always be checking your weather in the morning before you head out for the day so that you're not caught off guard. The picnic shelters on the Park Islands are open to the public, and most of the time if you do hear a storm coming, you can get off the water within about 15 to 20 minutes of each of those access points and just wait there until it passes over. If you do get into trouble and are stuck on the island, we are available for the water taxi service. Make sure everyone gets home safe. So a couple rules and regulations to be aware of out in the Thousand Islands. First off, you're only allowed to land on the National Park Islands. The rest are privately owned. Definitely need all the Transport Canada Coast Guard regulation equipment with you. So double check you have that essential mandatory items. We're really close to the United States border here as well. Canada, or Gananoque, was one of the hearts of the rum running era in the 1920 prohibition period. We're so close to the river, it is easy to move over into the United States. So just remember, no fishing in the U.S. waters. And if you do get out on an American island, you have to check in with the U.S. border services. If you're into kayak fishing, this is an awesome place to go. We've got bass, pike, walleye, muskie. The world's largest muskie was caught out here at 68 pounds. Perch, delicious. Catfish, yeah. If you're into sport fishing, the pike, walleye, and muskie are the three big ones that people just flock to this area to go and try and get the big one. So for accommodations, the best resource is Thousand Islands Tourism website. If you'd like to stay in bed and breakfasts, that's another option. There's a lot of great hotels and B&Bs along the water, so it is easy to book those ahead of time, and then you can simply just go from hotel or bed and breakfast to the next one, so a lot of people are really liking that shower and a comfy bed at the end of the day. A lot of the restaurants in Gananoque try and support the local farmers, so it's really important for us as well on our kayaking tours to be providing local ingredients. And most of the restaurants in town are really good about that. The fresh breads, the produce, even the meats and cheeses are a lot are locally made. So uh, come and enjoy. We've got a brewery in town now as well. It's good, definitely worth it after a long day paddling. To get out on the river with uh, Thousand Islands kayaking, we have a few different options. A lot of people like the self-guided rental packages. If you have some experience and you're comfortable going on your own, we can set you up with all the safety gear, some on-land instruction, go over the maps in a fair bit of detail, make sure you're comfortable with everything that you've got for the day. We even include the permits for the National Park Islands so you can stop and have a picnic or in a swim whenever you'd like. 
The guided tours are a little safer and they include a lot more history and knowledge from our local staff. The guided tour also has on water instruction, a little bit more detail there if you're a beginner paddler and you'd like to have the safety of one of our professional instructors with you, they're with you all day and we keep those group sizes really small so that you can move a little bit quicker and really get into the islands. The other option is multi-day camping. We do have overnight camping trips that are two nights, three days, and that's all inclusive. Beautiful spread, you know, campfire at night. We set up the tents. The only thing you need to bring is your own clothes and a sleeping bag. So if you'd like some more information about paddling in the Thousand Islands, you can check out our website. We're at thousandislandskayaking.com. You can download maps for free off of our website. If you're thinking of coming to the area to explore, you can check out the islands, maybe do a little bit of route planning in advance. And our phones are always available to help answer any questions, such as recommendations on places to stay, where to eat, what the routes look like, and make sure that we're building a good custom package for you and your group to get out there on the water. So that's thousandislandskayaking.com. Can't wait to see you on the river.